Hi guys, Paxinado here from Motion Swift Synthesis, and today I'd like to show you some cool Max for Life devices um, that we have built. Uh, they are actually really simple, uh, generic uh, MIDI controllers that allow you to control um, any hardware straight from uh, Ableton Live, and um, it's especially useful for us, being um, the developers for the Scope platform. Uh, it allows for easy control and automation of our devices uh, straight from Ableton Live. Um, but again, you can use this, uh, these controllers with any hardware synths. Um, so as I mentioned, these are available at our user area at the XY zone. Um, and there will be many more coming. Um, but right now we have already released uh, the batch of uh, first five uh, simple controllers. And this, this batch is only um, based on knobs. It's, uh, like I said, simple stuff. Um, five different kinds, uh, but are basically the same idea, you know. Uh, one of them is with four knobs, one of them is with eight knobs, 12, 16, and the eight knob version also has a randomizer in shot inside, which I will show you in a second. So again, what it allows us is to control and automate uh, hardware devices. So the first thing I'd like to, sh to do to show you this thing is um, I have in front of me an Ovation Launch Control, and I would like uh, each and one of these knobs on this controller to um, correspond to a knob on my innovation launch control so I can actually control um, control my controller via hardware so the f it's really actually simple uh, all I have to do is uh, go to the MIDI learn and twist a knob on my launch control for every one of these knobs that I want to control and now everything is connected and I can uh, move on to the next step um, so as you see here the first row of values is the actual knob value for each knob the second row is the MIDI CC assigned, the MIDI controller number that you assign to this particular knob. Now this is bi-directional, so uh, it will both transmit um, on this chosen MIDI CC as well as um, receive on this MIDI CC if you connect it in a, in a bi-directional config configuration, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. So. I tend to use controllers between, uh, if I can, 102 and 119. Uh, it's just, I know in my head that these controllers are as defined by the MIDI protocol, um, unassigned and unused on w any device. So I know it's safe to always use them. So we have 102, 103, 104, and 106 here, just for the example. And now I can, um, assuming that I've connected everything correctly and I'm sending my MIDI to where it's supposed to go, which in my case is the input of um, the, s the, t the input of the driver, you know, that that goes into the scope, and that goes into whatever device I want to control. In this case, I open for this example our Aeolian harp device. Now, if now all I need to do, if I want to link it, is I need to make sure that it's outputting. Let's see, scope PCI MIDI one. Let's just make sure that everything here is okay. No, it's not okay. The reason that it wasn't automating is, yeah, I said you got to make sure that it is connected to the to whatever it needs to go. So it's not this cable. I want it to go from the DAW from my controller into the ARP. Now, if I will go to create a controller, it'll already recognize what's coming from Ableton, which is number 102. For some reason, it's jumping also to 21. There we go, because I have another controller actually connected, so it's actually, I guess, recognizing that one. So 102 for the FM depth, it's enough. I'll show you just one for the example. And now as I move it here, you know, as I move my controller, you see it's moving both here and over on the device itself. Now, um, right now as it's connected in a unidirection. If I move this one, it'll move it on the scope device or on your hardware. But if you move on your hardware, it will not move on the live device. In order to do that, you need to send the MIDI back in to to live in whatever way. You know, if it's hardware, then um, just using connecting whatever you need to do. So in my case, it's just this is the device, and I'd connect it back into Ableton's input. Now, once I do that, now if I move on my device, it is bidirectional should be bi-directional anyways. Oh, okay, it's because of Ableton. In Ableton, you need to be in monitor in mode, and then it will work. Okay, so remember this part. I always kind of forget it myself, but then when it's not working, I, I remind myself that it needs to be on in, on in mode in the MIDI monitor. So now, 
if I move it here, it'll move um, my scope device. If I move it with my controller, it'll move my scope device. And if I move it on my scope device, it'll move the controller. So everything is behaving correctly. Now I can do that um, to any one of these knobs. Uh, I don't think it's necessary for this example to show. Um, but what it allows us again is to now I can really easily automate, you know, inside Ableton. Um, I can see my knob positions. I can use a USB controller, which for example, scope, or let's say your um, hardware hardware synth that you want to want to control does not know how to communicate with via USB. It only knows how to communicate via classic MIDI. Um, but then you can you know use your DAW to to um, communicate with whatever USB controller you're using, and um, then send it over whatever other you know MIDI methods to uh, your hardware or to other internal MIDI devices, like for example in the scope card. So basically, you're using your DAW as a sort of um, USB hub, and um, Ableton is just really great, especially for this. So Ableton and Max, Max for Live. So this is one of the controllers. Let's look quickly at the one with the randomizer. So I will not make the control assignments. It's uh, pretty much the same idea, um, only that here you have a randomizer. When you click here, you can see that um, all the knobs are being randomized. And they are randomized by this parameter, which is the depth of randomization. Uh, it's a cool way to, you know, uh, either get presets or even change your sounds real time if you just go by a little bit, you know. You can change it um, to as much depth as you would like. So these are, are um, really simple, as I said, um, Ableton controllers. Um, but as I've also said, uh, the user area, you know, it's a one-time fee. Uh, basically, if you want just the XY zone, if you if you are not a scope user, then um, the XY zone will cost just 15 euros to um, be a subscriber to, and those 15 euros grant you a lifetime subscription. And as this folder grows, you know you you get more and more content. Uh, it'll definitely include more controllers, and it already includes the Xbox 360 control, and it might include uh, other controllers as well in the future. So this could actually be pretty cool for you if you're using uh, hardware synths and you're looking for some um, simple but clever controllers, you know, uh, to use um, with Ableton Live or in standalone, uh, depending on whatever controller you know. Check our other videos. You will see um, the different stuff that is offered. So um, thanks for watching and um, check out our uh, Ocean Swift and Cedis website, oceanswift.net. Check out our user area and look out for the many more controllers that will come in the near future to this um, place over here. See you later, guys.